jest zawód. Boż za nim. Okay, so the, the, the problem are coming when you are touching the antenna, if uh, ah, then okay. the volume goes yeah. out. Yeah. 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 We are this we should understand this, I mean, it's an easy point. Okay. Or when something touches. Mm. Uh, you are on mute for the time being. Okay, make a test. Yes, yes. Okay, works perfectly. Don't touch the antenna. Everything will work. Okay. <laughs> now, this is. Uh, uh, so, sorry, before we start, is anybody missing a phone? Yes. I was slightly tempted as This is found over there. Uh, forward, backward, and. Ah, I see. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go and grab your chair. everyone welcome back to the session uh, before we start um, there is some good news your phone has been found we just don't know who you are that's mine okay so let's come forward and yeah okay i'll pick him later okay let's meet here you guys have the password so now back to physics and you yeah tanizaki will start our session about left shaft symbol and giving a little bit of overview. Right. Okay, please. Yeah. First, I'd like to thank organizer for this invitation, and I'm very happy to give a presentation of overview on left shift, recent progress on left shift symbol. So, yeah, yeah, I'd like to start with a motivation, yeah, very brief motivation. So, we are interested in, yeah, extreme condition of quantum chromodynamics and one of the natural candidates in our universe is inside the neutron star because inside yeah inside the core of the neutron star there must exist very cold and nuclear matter and unconventional nuclear nuclear theory may not work in such extreme conditions. So we'd like to study it from the viewpoint of fundamental dynamics of quarks and gluons. And 
yeah, recent progress of astrophysical observation tells us a lot about yeah, about structure of the cold and dense nuclear matter. And from the theoretical side, we like to compute partition function of the finite density QCD given by this expression. But the problem is, since the positivity of quark determinant is violated at finite quark chemical potential, so we cannot use uh, the idea of important sampling, so we should do something to, to make the sign problem milder or eliminate. And uh, yeah, in this talk, I'd like to stick to the idea on complex complexification of the variable, especially on left jet symbol. So let me start with a brief idea why we need complexification of variables. So let's consider the passing integral with this expression in a very, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, in this way, then if f of x is real, then there is no sign problem because we can regard this integrand as a probability density, so Monte Carlo works well. In other words, since this is a positive function, so you can find a maximum which <coughs> contributes most importantly by solving the classical equation of motion. However, if S of X complex, then this has a oscillatory phases, so it has same problem appears. And in the language of classical equation of motion, then if we'd like to find its solution, then this sol Equation says the real part and imaginary part of s prime x must be simultaneously equal to zero. It is too restrictive to find such solution on if we stick to real configurations. So there is a simple idea to solve it, complexify your variable. And uh, it is not shown correctly, but uh, yeah, let me yeah briefly w yeah explain indeed the complex idea of complex of variables can save, yeah, yeah, can eliminate sign problem in some cases. So let me pick up the area integral, and if we direct to perform this integration literally on real axis, then you must do numerical integration on this very uh, bad oscillatory function, which is shown by red dashed curve. So numerically, it is hopeless <coughs> to perform it. Indeed, yeah, if you compute area of positive and negative region, it is infinity. So you must compute yeah, finite quantity by subtracting two infinity quantities. So it is a very bad sign problem. But yeah, let's regard this variable as a complex variable. Then thanks to the Cauchy's theorem, you can deform your integration contour continuously without changing the result of the integration. So that means that so yeah, in order to eliminate the sign problem, let's require that this classical action must con must have a constant phase. So let's require a stationary phase condition. Then, yeah, then you can find one nice integration contour which connects two con nicely convergent regions. And on such integration contour, yeah, since you require stationary phase condition, no oscillation happens for this integrand, and it converges to zero very smoothly. Indeed, if you require stationary phase condition, that also requires that on your task, your Boltzmann weight goes to zero as fast as possible. It is the steepest descent path. So sometimes, this, in this way, complexification of variables helps, our, helps us a lot. And more form formally, yeah, one can rewrite early integration like this way. So here, <laughs> J's are steepest descent paths of this model. And in the case of early integral, since it is defined by the cubic classical action, it has two saddle points or two classical solutions. And associated with those two classical solutions, we, you can construct two steepest descent paths. And in general, early function is written by a sum of those two steepest descent integrations. And when your parameter A is positive, you will get this left figure. So in order to reconstruct the integral over real axis, you should pick up this <coughs> integration cycle. And you should neglect the, the another one. On the other hand, if you consider this param negative parameter region of this A, then you will find this right figure. And in this case, yeah, 
these two integration cycles must be summed up with equal weight in order to reconstruct the original integration cycle or a real axis. And, and, and this kind of information is summarized this topological number, which is given by an intersection number between steepest ascent paths and original, inter, uh, original integration <coughs> cycle or a real axis. So this orange dashed lines shows the steepest ascent paths for, for each for each steepest descent integration contours, and only when it has an intersection with the original integration cycle, it must be taken into account in order to give the correct result for the path integral. So, so far, so good. So, this is the reference symbol method for one variable, one variable integration. Then, how about its generalization to the n-dimensional integration? The problem is that, so let's again require that imaginary part of this classical action must stay constant. So let's again require a stationary phase condition. But it only gives one condition. But, but since we do a, co we complexify the variable, so it, your space of uh, configuration is 2n dimensional. So this condition just, said, just gives 2n minus dimensional manifold. But since you only have n, dimension, n variables to be integrated out, so we would like to construct n-dimensional manifolds. So it is too high dimensional. And in order to solve this problem, the, yeah, we must introduce gradient flow. So let's consider this gradient flow equation. Given, yeah, so this bar takes complex conjugation of the gradient of the classical action. Yes, and uh, indeed, this defines the steepest descent flow, flow equation. Indeed, if you take the derivative of the classical action along this flow time, then you will get this one. So it is uh, real and positive. That means that real part of the action increases along this flow. In other words, your Boltzmann weight go converges to zero along this flow line. Furthermore, since imaginary part of S must be zero since this right hand side is positive or a real number. So, so this flow line, this flow line satisfies this stationary phase condition. So maybe by using this gradient flow, you might have an impression that you can construct some steepest descent and dimensional manifold in, in some way. And that's correct. So let's construct lecture symbols by this way. So Let's collect flow line which emanates from the saddle point or a complex classical solution. Then that forms an n dimensional manifold. I do not give a proof, but it is a mathematical fact. And this is a, so in the case of one dimensional integration, this is nothing but a steepest descent cycle. And by constructing the reference symbol in this way, then n-dimensional oscillatory integration satisfies the same formula as in the case of one-dimensional integration. So it can be, again, decomposed into the sum of a steepest descent path. And the weight is given by an intersection number between steepest ascent cycle and original integration, original integration cycle. So this was developed in mathematics around the 90s or 80s, and it is reviewed by Witten in 2010 in the context of complex chan simon theory. And yeah, thanks to his nice review, we can un now understand what this formula means. So we are now trying to apply this technique to solve the same problem. And yeah, so since there was a nice review by Luis Forzato at, Ratis, at the Ratis, last Lattice conference, so in my talk, I mainly focus on the development after this Lattice conference. But so let me briefly review what ha has been developed before this Lattice 2015. So most works before this Lattice conference were deposited to Monte Carlo simulation on one left just symbols. So instead of doing path integral over all, all conf field configuration of, of real variables, you replace your partition function by this way. So let's pick up one left just symbol and 
integrating over that reflection symbol, let's define new partition function. And the motivation for this appro approximation or answers is uh, given by, in some sense, mean field type approximation or uniform field approximation. So assume that your field is uniform, then your action is always proportional to volume. So if you find several subtle points or sev several classical solutions with the uniform field answers, then the, their difference is always proportional to the volume. So you can always pick up one of them in the infinite volume limit. Others are very subdominant and vanishes exponentially fast. And uh, there's another practical reason to do this approximation because, uh, yeah, mathematically we must do this summation, but, yeah, but it was not known how to do it at that time. So, but, so by doing this approximation and construct some numerical technique to do a Monte Carlo simulation on reflex symbol, then <coughs> let's learn something on the property of the sign problem. So this was a, so this was a motivation for this replacement. And uh, many, yeah, yeah, and it was checked that, uh, yeah, this uh, replacement was success, successful for several models, and a lot of numerical techniques are developed. So I only show several nice figures which was successful with this replacement. One of them was a relativistic both gas, and uh, its action is given by this one, and it introduces uh, 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 yeah, chemical potential for U1 symmetry, and uh, this part gives a sign problem if we like to perform path integral for this model, and uh, if we do <coughs> it, uh, if we compute it, we are relating very naively, then at large mu, your signal to noise ratio is really, really bad, so you cannot solve it. But if you do a one single under, you can compute it, but it, it was done, done by these authors, and it was checked that left just single method and complex range bar method gives a consistent result, and it is and the correct onset of number density as a function of chemical potential was nicely de described. And it was also checked that uh, this uh, one single under was successful for chiral random matrix <laughs> model at, at this parameter region. So, so this was the Osborne model and uh, yeah, by study of Morgan split off in 2013, Naive complex random method fails and it converges to the phase quenched result, which is represented by this blue dashed line. But in the case of one left symbol and that, then it gives a, yeah, it reproduces the exact result, which is shown by red solid line. By the way, I'd like to notice that, uh, yeah, yeah, naive, although naive complex random method does not give a correct answer. If you do some gauge cooling technique, then its applicability of complex random method is expanded until this parameter region. So this parameter region is also covered by gauge cooling, uh, complex random method with gauge cooling. So so far, so yeah, the, so so this kind of study may be related to the fact that complex random method and reflex symbols are related. So, and I will give some uh, yeah, insight for that observation in later in the latter of my talk. Okay, then let's go on a recent development after Lattice 2015. So one of the big developments in this in this field was that zero plus one dimensional fermion model was studied extensively and and this model is in some sense give shares some same property of the finite density sign problem of finite density QCD. So by running the property of this model very yeah yeah very clearly then it may get some we can get some insight on the property of left chat symbol method for finite density QCD. And and uh, yeah, surprisingly, these three groups give the same conclusion of the zero plus one dimensional fermion model almost at the same time. <coughs> so yeah, let me pick up our study. But uh, yeah, all three, all three paper give the same, same discussion or, or similar discussion or, and give same conclusion. 
So in our model, we consider one side tower model given by this second quantized Hamiltonian. So it is a model of a uh, lattice electron, and if up spin and down spin electrons share the same size due to the Coulomb repulsion energy, it increases the energy. And the second term controls the number density of fermion, and, and mu is a chemical potential. This model can be exactly solved, and the number density is given by this expression. And if we take the zero temperature limit, correct behavior of the number density is shown by this blue curve. <laughs> but problem is that, so if we solve this model using mean field approximation, then what you will obtain for the number density in the zero temperature limit is given by this red dashed line. So, yeah, so, and this difference is also, it plays a very important role in the study of the sign problem for this model. So let's study what, is, what happens for the passive integral expression of this model. So I introduced Hubbard stratum beach auxiliary field phi, and effective, effective Lagrangian is given by this expression. So first term is a Gaussian term of the auxiliary field, and the second term represents a fermion bilinear operator. And it is important to notice that auxiliary field coupling between auxiliary field and fermion is pure imaginary. So that means that this coupling causes some complex contribution to the uh, partition function. And uh, its passive integral expression is, given, is reduced to the, this one-dimensional integration. And uh, as you see, so this fermion determinant factor is complex due to this complex coupling. And uh, I'd like to notice that this ordinary field is related to the number density by this formula. So if you take imaginary part of the depth of ordinary field, it is nothing but the <coughs> number density. Okay, then let's study the property of the sign problem of this model using Lefiat symbol method. So at first, let's study the sign problem when chemical potential is su sufficiently negative, let's say which is smaller than minus one half of the Coulomb repulsion energy. Then you are, if you compute your fermion determinant factor, it, this is the expression. But this fugacity factor is exponentially small in this region if you take zero temperature limit. So fermion determinant is almost one. This means that origin of this sign problem is eliminated. So sign problem almost disappears. And indeed, if you solve the gradient flow equation to construct the left chart symbol, then you will find this figure. So this black star shows zeros of this fermion determinant. And uh, these red solid lines are steepest, uh, steep, steepest descent paths. And you see, this is the original integration cycle or real axis. And you can find that one left chest symbol is almost overlaps with the original integration cycle. This is not just, this is nothing but the manifestation of the disappearance of sign problem in this chemical potential region. So, yeah, so in this region, you can easily solve the sign problem. <coughs> but the problem is, if we exceed chemical potential, so if your chemical potential exceeds minus half of the Coulomb repulsion energy, then something non trivial happens. So as you increase your chemical potential, these complex zeros of the fermion determinant <laughs> goes, to, goes in this direction. And originally, it was right in the <coughs> lower half plane, but at this critical value, it crosses the original integration cycle. And through this process, a Stokes phenomenon happens, and original integration cycle, or dominant left symbol, is decomposed into multiple left symbols. And if you calculate the, this position of these uh, steepest, uh, steepest descent paths, then its imaginary path is given by mu plus one half. And uh, in some sense, this is nothing but a uh, mean field free energy, so a uh, mean field number density. So within the mean field approximation, number density should uh, fo follow this formula. But then what happens? It is a totally wrong result. So in order to understand what happens, so we computed the classical solutions as a function of temperature and chemical potential in the zero temperature limit, and computed the classical, 
classical values of the uh, of the, the classical action. And uh, yeah, if you evaluate the classical action at the most dominant saddle point, this is nothing but the negative of the mean field free energy. And uh, as you see, this gives a mean field number density if you take a deri derivative in terms of the chemical potential. But what is interesting is that if you compute difference between difference of free energy between these different <coughs> subject points, then its mean field free energy is proportional to the temperature, not the inverse temperature. So, so yeah, naively thinking action is proportional to volume, so it should pro be proportional to the inverse temperature, but that's not the case. So many left symbol can equally importantly contribute. <coughs> And furthermore, if we take summation over those reflection symbols, then imaginary part of this free energy is different. So there is a severe interference of complex phases in summing up reflection symbol in this model. And uh, yeah, if you perform class computation of classical partition function by this naive formula, then you will get this uh, green dust line, which is almost overlap with the exact result, which is shown with graph solid line. And uh, instead of doing the, the classical approximation, we need a uh, exact computation, but try to truncate the summation over left jet symbols. And if you only compute one left jet symbol, then you will get this mean field result. But instead, if we sum up five left jet symbols at the inverse temperature 30, then you will obtain this blue dotted line, which is <coughs> almost, again, almost overlaps with the exact result. And you can evaluate that necessary number of reflection symbols in this model is proportional to the inverse temperature, which is the volume of this system divided by 2 pi. So yeah, in this case, five <coughs> reflection symbol is sufficient. So yeah, you may find that uh, severe sign problem reappears in doing the reflection symbol decomposition. But compared with a naive or conventional relating technique, this sign problem is much milder, so complexification of variable may still help to understand or attack <laughs> the sign problem. So this is a result for the zero plus one dimensional fermion model. So I'd like to go move on to a different topic, different development of the left jet symbol method. So I'd like to discuss the next, I'd like to discuss the relation of the complex Langua method and the left jet symbol method. And these are the list of paper which attacks this problem. And uh, yeah, I think many of you already know what is a complex Langua method is, but uh, I'd like to briefly review what it is just in case. So complex Langua method is given by this stochastic differential equation. So if you are classical action is real, then this gives a stochastic quantization, which is equivalent to the path integral quantization. And in 1980s, Crowder and Parisi tries to apply this technique to the case when sign problem appears or for complex classical actions. And even in such cases, we can do stochastic calculus and show that dyson schrodinger equation holds for yeah, so so you can construct some ensemble average which satisfies the dyson schrodinger equation. And in the late 2000, around from 2009 or later, or after, there is a, much, a lot of development of complex Langevin methods. But uh, yeah, since we have another session of the complex Langevin methods, let's move on to the aspect of it relation between complex Langevin method and the left jet symbol method. And to be honest, we do not know what is the rigorous relation between those two. So those two methods rely on complexification, but not much is not yet known for their relations. So I, okay, so I pick up a figure from, from this paper and it says that, so if we plot or plot the complex Langevin distribution over left jet symbol figure, then it is, it, they are similar to each other in some sense, but they are still different. So complex Langevin method is clearly two-dimensional distribution, but left jet symbol method is one-dimensional. 
And in order to get a correct result on left single, you should take into account a residual phase, or which is a, comes from a Jacobian factor of the integration over this curved, curved configuration space. So yeah, so they are similar, but still they are different. So so yeah, we still have to do a lot to understand what they are what their relation is, but. Motivated by this kind of idea, we can sometimes show that the, the, so when complex Langevin method fails, then multiple left symbol can may contribute. So 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 severe sign problem in taking so severe sign problem for interference of multiple left symbol may be the origin of the failure of complex Langevin method. So let me show this. So I can show this statement in the semi-classical limit. So let me briefly introduce what the proof is. So assume that complex Langevin method is correct, then you can write down this <laughs> equation. So since your complex Langevin method is correct, you can decompose your, your expectation value as a sum over left symbols. And assume that your Planck constant is small enough then your stochastic noise is very small. So your distribution could be would accumulate around some complex subtle points. So if you take this ensemble average, it must be sum over the, the operate, yeah, value of the operator at the classical point. And whose coefficient must be positive because what we do here is the ensemble average. So positivity of the probability density said that this coefficient must be semi-positive. And uh, yeah, and by the way, you can e explicitly evaluate this right-hand side in between the semi-classical approximation. So you can compare the coefficients to read off what is uh, this coefficient C sigma, at least for dominant subtle points. And it said that C sigma is given by this formula but the problem is, if there exists several dominant subtle points with different complex phases, then this C sigma must be complex according to this formula. This contract dicks with the fact that C sigma is semi-positive. So, so we show that within the semi-classical approximation, complex Langevin method gives the wrong result if there exists several dominant subtle points with different complex phases. And there is a wrong history of the complex Langevin method, and we have and it has been developed that histogram test of complex Langevin method can judge the, its failure or correctness. And the relation of this histogram test and this criterion is not yet known. So this is a big open problem to understand the property of the complex Langevin method and left-hand symbol method in more detail. But there are several trials to, to cure the complex Langevin method. One of them is to deform the theory in what, so that only one left symbol contributes. Then this, this contradiction does not happen. So and, and after this deformation, let's apply complex Langevin method. So this is given by the, so let's assume the partition function is given by this formula. And this f of x represents some fermion determinant. Then instead of computing this partition function, let's compute this one by introducing some function g so that only one left symbol contributes in this new path integral. And then in, in general, so, so by this deformation, the property of expectation value is different. It changes, but you can relate the original expectation value but by new expectation value in this way. So this, OK. So th there is a common factor g quench over, over f quench. So if you can compute this factor very precisely, then by using the new expectation value, you can compute original theory. So if you can find a nice g, then you can use complex Langevin method to compute this new expectation value. But it is not yet, not yet known how we should construct nice G in a concrete manner. So if you can find such a nice procedure, then you can attack the sign problem in this way, maybe. 
And there's another approach. So <coughs> second approach is to give up to kill the sign problem completely. But since the origin of the failure of complex Langer method is suggested that there exist phases among the different graphics symbols, so so let's attach such pages to the complex Langevin distribution and do relating. So this is the second idea to cure the complex Langevin method in this context. And if we test that kind of technique to the one side Hubbard model or Fermion model, then you can find a nice correspondence. You can again find a nice correspondence between complex Langevin distribution and original uh, or left and left single decomposition. And so without so if you perform complex Langevin method naively, so you will get a mean field result. But but if you attach a pages comp computed by reflected symbols, then you can find nice improvement. But there is still some systematic error, and I do not know how this error behaves in the large volume limit. So it is still open that whether we can justify this kind of procedure or make it rigorous. But it, this is another possibility to, to consider the same problem in the context of complex Langevin method. OK, then finally, I'd like to uh, review uh, uh, on recent development to do multiple, multiple single simulation, which is given by these authors in this paper. So, so far, so I, ha I have emphasized that Maybe there exist many reflex symbols, and uh, that uh, in interference among those reflex symbols play an important role to evaluate the physical observable in a correct manner. For that purpose, you have to compute complex saddle point and construct reflex symbols among them, and compute integration over each reflex in symbols, and we must sum up them with the sign problem. So that seems to be very hard. But they, so recently there is a nice idea to overcome this or to do all this procedure automatically. So let's consider the case of early integral again. Then, so this is the original integration cycle and these blue lines are left just symbol in the case of early integral. And if you draw a line of gradient flow, then these green, green lines, green arrows, show the gra this gradient flow. And the idea is the following. Let's pick some time t, and let's deform your original integration contour to some complex contour by using this gradient flow. So by fixing time t, this, real, this point is mapped to this point, and this point is mapped to this point, and just connect those points. OK, so mathematically, so you can define such j of t by this way. So by solving the gradient flow with this initial condition, and let's fix your flow time t. And yeah, its image is your new integration contour. And this is just a deformation in the complexified space. So using Cauchy's theorem, you can change your in original integration contour as j of t. But what is nice is that this j of t is just a reparameterization of the original <laughs> integration cycle. So using just a change of the variable, you can compute this integration by this way. So if you define this, if, if you define a new effective action by this formula, then you can, you, you can Apply usual Monte Carlo technique with a reweighting. Yeah. And what is nice is that if, even if your sign problem was too severe in this case, maybe if you are lucky, in this deformation, sign problem is, becomes much milder, and you may be able to apply reweighting. OK, so since time is almost up, so, so I just show some figure by this paper. So they apply this technique to compute the Feynman propagator in the Schrodinger dish formalism. And their parameter is beta is 0.8. And their real-time action is given by this one. 
and they compute a real Feynman propagator, and uh, these blobs are signals of, of, their, of their computation. And uh, these black uh, solid line and dashed line represent the result of the numerical diagonalization of the corresponding Hamiltonian. And you can easy, you can clearly see that there is a nice repro yeah their computation nicely reproduces the real time Feynman propagator. So I'd like to summarize my talk. So considering the sign problem from the viewpoint of left single may help to understand its structure. And uh, yeah, and uh, according to the zero plus one dimension fermion model then many left-shift single methods can contribute to, to, to attack the silver blaze region in some sense. So in order to describe the correct behavior of the number density of fermion or observable, then interference of several left-shift single play an important role. And, but, yeah, dynamics in the complex five space is very complicated. We do not know much about it yet. So, so to understand it, we can still go on a one single angle or complex flangeal method or saddle point analysis. And comparison among them gives us a good insight what is happening in the, inside the complex fight space. And this gives us uh, more information on the side problem. So combining this, uh, this understanding, we may be able to apply we may be able to extend the applicability of this system for broader cases. And uh, yeah, and thanks to this development, yeah, <coughs> I hope that this may enable us to study the non particle field theory even with the same problem. That's all, thanks a lot. Thank you very much for finishing ahead of your time. Yeah. <laughs> you really made it. So we have time for plenty of questions or comments. Hey. Okay. Yeah, uh, one comment on the comparison between Langevin and Timbos, which I think is generic, so applies to all the theories uh, that you can look at. So in uh, Langevin, you always have attractive fixed points and repulsive fixed yeah. points. But in the symbols, since the imaginary part of the drift is interchanged, yeah. all the fixed points have a stable and unstable direction. And so that means that some of the symbols will go to fixed points that correspond to attractive fixed points on the Langevin dynamics. Mm -hmm. And some of the symbols will go to fixed points that correspond to repulsive fixed points on the Langevin mm -hmm. dynamics. On the Langevin dynamics, because the repulsive ones are avoided. So those symbols will not be <coughs> That region will not be sampled in one yeah, yeah. Um but they may contribute, maybe uh, stable timbers, contributing timbers. Mm. So that's the real difference where, say, half of the fixed points uh, will be repulsive for one and therefore not uh, sampled. And that applies to, that's generic, because that is applied on the drift. Yeah. Another? <laughs> I want to say. Um, other questions or comments? Well, I can make another comment. Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> so in the, another comment is that in the 5-4 lump, well, this is too common. In the X to the 4 model, uh, Langevin works when the distribution is bounded in a strip. And the point where this uh, changes is something like the coefficients are 3a spread larger than b spread, something like that. But the um, change from one table to two tables happens at different parameter value. Uh, a is larger than B or something like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we met that yeah. so the, 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 the place where the lunch dynamics breaks down is explicitly not related to the effect of uh, how many temples, uh, you know, where the, where the Stokes will to happen to go to other temples. This is another comment. Yeah, so that is the reason why we have not give a strong correspondence between complex random method and the left just symbol. But, uh, yeah, so what I'd like to say is that within the semi-classical analysis, so we must assume H bar is sufficiently small or distribution is clearly separated. But in those regions, so so maybe so if you can interpret your complex natural distribution in terms of reference symbols, then phases among them can maybe <laughs> give some insight. Yeah. I yeah, I will look at it up. Yeah, yeah. We still have time. 
So maybe I can ask a question myself. <laughs> um, so um, this idea of performing the um, integration contour with the flow and maybe stopping before really, really reaching the uh, You are talking about the yeah, exactly. yeah. So in practice, has this been tried? In what kind of systems? Um, no, this will be the topic of the next <laughs> thing about it. Yeah, if I can text it we on 0 plus 1 dimension of Hermione model and also for this real time simulation. Let's say on paper, on paper how um, um, is it easy to implement this uh, for pure gauge phase? For it? Well, I think phase. so, but uh, <laughs> I'm not a specialist on it, so please ask the best similarities. Um, any other any other comments? Then maybe perhaps I can ask a question then. So it it actually uh, was a very good talk because I was thinking of lots of questions, and on the next slide you always answer those questions. <laughs> um, but there was no next slide after this one. So will this be covered by by you or as a yes? So th this is of particular interest to me because um, I also happen to play with, with those things. And my problem was back then that when this, this time, this, this um, extent, time extent of the schwingel kaldish contour was long enough beyond an oscillation, then complex Langevin broke down. Yeah. But do we have any similar problems in, in Lapschaft symbols? Uh, so, yeah, since we do not know the structure of the complex saddle points in this model, so I cannot give a good answer, but in the case of some uh, quantum mechanics, then you can find a lot of saddle points, and as you make your real time longer, then many of them, real part of IS starts to degenerate. So again, maybe interference among them play an important role, but I do not check it explicitly, but I'd like to check it in future. Okay, One last comment. One question. So, I, I just want to add some more confusion. As, uh, in uh, large of one, as well as in the electricity, we have attracting um, recursive fixed points. In the large of one, it comes in connection with zeros of the mirror, that is, poles in the drift. Okay. okay. Because in both cases, like I said, they are attractive. Refuse, repulsive. Uh, the problem is not coming to them. The algorithm will never come to them. Because uh, in, uh, I'm not sure about symbols, but it's a, a complex large of uh, the attractive direction is of measure zero. And because of the noise, it always goes to yeah, the other yeah, direction, right. so it leaves the poles. So the problem is <coughs> not the pole itself. But some regions, uh, with larger equation, some regions which are not correctly sampled yeah. because of the pole. The pole somehow leads the process in the region which are not correctly sampled. Mm -hmm. So not, it's not the pole itself, although it's similar, like uh, with symbol, is recursive attractive mm -hmm. at the same point. Yeah. yeah, thank you for interrupting. Yeah, in the case of rapture symbol, so if we have zeros or poles, then it is easy to decompose the rapture symbol into one rapture symbol into multiple rapture symbols. Mm -hmm. and, and in the case of Hermione model, it looks at, it seems to play an important role for severe of the sign problem. And I guess that it would be also related to the severeness of the sign problem at half of the final mass in the final density QCD. But uh, yeah, yeah, it is still ongoing project, and uh, we do not have a good insight for higher dimensional field theory. So we should still go on to to get more good insight on lecture singles. But yeah, thank you for the comment. Yes, and thank you very much for answering the questions again. So the next talk will solve the same problem actually with the flow and it is presented by Paolo Bedak.